At the end of the month, the Mets came to town. And in a seesaw first game, threatened the Cubs' 6-5 ninth inning lead. There he goes! High fly ball! It's gonna drop, baby! Great catch by Dotson! Try for the double! Hang it! Top to end! Top to end! Top to end! Holy cow! Dotson made the play with the bike to be in there! Look at the scene out there! After a 10-3 trouncing of the Mets the next day, the fans were calling for a sweep. But it would take a state of grace for that to happen. The series' final game was tied at four in the bottom of the ninth when Mark Grace came up. The pet. There's a drive way back. Way, might be. Cubs win. Cubs win. Cubs win. Grace hits a home run into the right field bleachers. The man who had amazed the Amazing Mets was the man they called Amazing Grace. The runner-up in last year's Rookie of the Year voting had become the Cubs' leading hitter and a young star in the rise. He's an outstanding player. He's an outstanding hitter. He does anything on a baseball field that you ask him to do it, and I don't know what else a manager could ask for. Rarely has a player's name so well described as play both in the field and at the plate. Displaying remarkable grace, the young man is beginning to leave a mark on the game that may well prove amazing. On August 7th, a battle for first place began at Wrigley Field against the Expos. 39,000 fans were on hand for one of the biggest August games there in years. And starter Greg Maddox made it worth the wait. A high fly ball. Jerome Morton under the ball. Cubs win. Are in first place by a full game. The next day, there was more rookie swinging and more rookie singing. You sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game? <laughs> well, swinging a little more freely was Jerome Walton who was attempting to set a Cubs rookie record for hitting in consecutive games. There's a drive! Way back! It might be out of here! It is! Holy cow! The 19th game in a row is a home run! And the Cubs lead one to nothing! Exciting as it was, the Walton streak wasn't the only Cubs streak going that day. Relief pitcher Les Lancaster hadn't allowed a run in 30 straight innings. But the Expos were threatening that streak and the Cub lead in the ninth inning. The pitch. A little tap. Cubs win. Cubs win. Lancaster. Field of the tap and through the grave. The Cubs have won the first two games of the series. And the Cubs now lead by two games. In the series finale, the Cubs were hoping to bid farewell to the Montreal Expos. In a winning cause, Ryan Sandberg homered for the third straight day in a streak that reached a team record tying five days. Jerome Walton extended his hitting streak to match his own number, and the Cubs won three to nothing. The Cubs hadn't had a pair of newcomers like Rookie of the Year Jerome Walton and runner-up Dwight Smith since the days of Ken Hubbs and Lou Brock. Walton's hitting streak was already news, but as he neared Ron Santos' Cubs record of 28 straight games, it became high drama.
I'm a Cub player. All those great hitters I've had, nobody ever hit in 29 straight games. Hello, looping liner. He's going to beat him out. He does. A base hit. The 30th game in a row. The Jerome Walton has hit safely in. Holy cow. The streak assured Walton of a place in team history and the Rookie of the Year award. Another dramatic ninth inning rally in Cincinnati preserved Rick Sutcliffe's 13th win. Rick had been driven from the game in the eighth by a two-run home run that gave the Reds a 2-1 lead. The ace of the Cincinnati bullpen, John Franco, came in and in the ninth, retired the first two Cub batters. Then, after loading the bases, he had to face the red-hot Jerome Walton. The Never Say Die Cubs had once again pulled one out, and they swept the Reds in Cincinnati for the first time since 1978. Step by step, the boys of Zimmer were converting skeptics, and the city was rocking. The Cubs are rocking all over town. There's a new sensation, and it's really coming down. North of Chicago, Waveland Avenue, there's magic in the air, a new point of view. It's been a long time now, too many years, too many losses and too many tears. But that's all over now, gonna give it to you straight. The Cubs are winning, and man, it feels great. The Cubs are rocking. Walton and Smith, man, they got the speed with Sambrick and Gray. What more do we need? Balecki and Maddox firing away. Sutcliffe on the mound. What more can we say? Now mentions a man. What I whole thing is his name? He comes in late to save that game. He throws a Damon or Joe behind the plate. They call him safe before it gets too late. Cubs are rocking. Cubs are rocking. back and then there's Andre Dawson. We're talking about the man that they call awesome. That's the law. And Les has the zeros and Popeye's the man that leads our hero. Zero. Wayne, Harry, and Steve. Now, holy cow. The Cubbies are ready. Ready right now. Going all the way in this windy old town. The Cubbies are rocking. Gonna win that crowd. Cubbies are rocking. Cubbies are rocking. Damon Berryhill's strong first half of the season helped solidify Cub catching and put another potent bat in the lineup. But when the hard-throwing catcher suffered an injury that would keep him out of the stretch drive, rookies Joe Girardi and Rick Rona provided able backup at backstop. In football, it's called the House of Pain. And for the Cubs, the Astrodome has always been torturous. On August 18th, the Cubs jumped to a 5 to nothing lead there, but couldn't hold on. In the bottom of the eighth, with the Cubs still leading 5-3, to three, Calvin Schiraldi let one slip. And the Bucs gets away! 